global companies. And it's, it's been a few years that we can quote another new global company that is coming from Singapore. And we hope to see more. And that's why we need to strengthen our own business sector. That's why we need to fit our talents in and help develop and make SME attractive again. That's why this year, there are a lot of efforts to be in implementing some of these measures that I mentioned and some of the new measures that we roll out. And it's important to make SME sector attractive again, if it has been attractive in the past, attractive again, and to renew and grow this sector, to renew and grow our own local business, and to help them be vibrant, and to help them to grow as large as they can, and to be able to create as many jobs as they can. Because end of the day, whatever we do with our economy or business sector is about the job. It's about making sure our unemployment rate is as low as possible. Every Singaporean has a job, has a house, uh, can take public transport. <laughs> uh, some who can get a car, get a car. <laughs> so, um, we'll continue to restructure the economy. Uh, it's the start now. And because we want to sustain our economy for the future and for people and for families to be able to see the future together. And I think that's an important aspect of what this budget is about. It's the start of a journey of a restructuring of a transition. Okay. For that, thank you very much. I uh, hope to interact with more of you and do give us your feedback as many as you can. Budget is in the middle of it. Uh, your feedback will still be taken seriously. It's not the end of it. Like I said, it's the start. So hopefully I'll talk to more of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Teo. And um, may we invite Dr. Anas Khan, ICPA's president, to present you with a token of appreciation. Dr. Khan, please. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you, Minister Teo and Dr. Khan. Can you take your seats, please? Now, I would like to invite Professor Sami Long to give his presentation on the Budget 2013 update and its tax implications for corporate firms and individuals. Professor Sam is a tax specialist and holds a master's degree in taxation and public finance. He possesses over 20 years of experience in Singapore taxation and is currently a professor at the Singapore Management University. Besides being a certified public accountant of Singapore, he is also a fellow of Association of Chartered Certified Accountants and a Chartered Tax Advisor of the Chartered Institute of Taxation in the United Kingdom. He co-chairs the Taxation and Levies Committee of ICPAS and has been a member of this committee since 1989. He is also a director of the Tax Academy of Singapore. Without further ado, let's welcome Professor Sam on stage. Professor Sam, please. Minister, President ICPAS, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Those of you who know me, know that I'm a man of few words. <laughs> but after two glasses of wine, I can talk a lot. So I've actually requested approval from Ernest to disguise white wine in, as water. But Ernest said with the minister around, it's not good to have Iqbal's speaker half drunk in the morning. <laughs> so, without wine, I will have very little to say. So, we'll probably have coffee break at 9.30. <laughs> well, a lot of people asked me about my impression of the budget. I honestly say I was very pleased with the budget. And I explain why. Usually, I think people who know me know that I always criticize PAP. <laughs> always. But I was very pleased with this budget. Well, a lot of people have made representations that our corporate tax should come down. Hong Kong is 16 and a half, our perpetual competitor. We should be below Hong Kong. People suggested 15, some even went 
to compare with Ireland of 12 and a half. But I think they have short memories. I'm not sure whether those people who clamour for reduction of corporate tax remembered what happened when corporate tax was reduced from 20% to 18%. GST went up 2%. <laughs> so the government has to balance the budget, so when it gives away with one hand, it probably takes back with two hands. <laughs> so be very careful about asking for handouts. But even though the corporate tax rate remains at 17%, we are very competitive. If you look at the chart here, excepting for Hong Kong, 16 and a half, Ireland, I, I use Ireland because people want Singapore to be modeled from the corporate tax reduction of Ireland, but they conveniently forget Ireland now is bankrupt. <laughs> and we, we have a lot of reserves, so let's not have our reserves whittled away. But we are very competitive at 17%. Around clustered around the mid-20s are all the major trading nations. U.S. is way up there at 35, but Obama has already indicated that he wants to look at a reform and a corporate tax rate of 28. So everyone is clustering around the mid-20s. And the good thing in Singapore now is with difficult times in U.S., in EU, there is less pressure for corporate tax to come down. Because if you track the development of corporate tax over the last 15 years, it had been trending down about 10%. But now with the huge deficits, they can no longer afford to have downward trend in corporate tax rate. So pressure is not on us. And I feel at 17%, it is very attractive. Honestly, my personal opinion is at 20%. We are attractive. I won't be very popular with the Business Federation. But we have a 30% tax rebate, and this rebate is good for three years 13, 14, and 15. So for YA13, we are already giving a rebate for profits we made last year. And the 30% rebate is actually very, very generous. And it's kept at 30,000. So if we take our partial exemption rebates into account, our corporate tax rate is a lot lower than our headline rate of 17%. At 300,000, 5.8. Even all the way to a million, we are looking at 11.4%. Now, I put the figure there, 740735. What's so magical about this chargeable income? Because at this level of chargeable income, you will have the maximum 30% rebate. And this is important because I'll come back to this later on the 740-735. So we are very competitive. So I think instead of clamoring for reduction, we should see how we are going to make profits. Because at the end of the day, even if we pay 17%, we get to keep 83%. Well, everyone had been talking about PIC, and PIC was introduced in 2010 enhanced in 2011, 2012, and there is a minor tweaking in 2013 budget. And the PIC applies to six activities, acquisition of IP, registration of IP, investments in design, 
investments in automation, be it leasing of automation equipment or purchase of automation equipment and training of employees. And you note that all these six activities emphasizes on productivity, on innovation. And that's a whole idea behind PIC. There is a cash conversion component and last year the conversion was enhanced from 30,000 to 60,000. So the effect, effective rate of conversion is 15% because for 100,000 of PIC expenses, we get to deduct 400,000. So 400,000 converted into 60,000 cash, effective conversion is 15%. Now, again, this is important because some companies, especially when minister referred to SMEs, SMEs should try to understand how this cash conversion works for them. And I think a lot of you have clients who are SMEs, so it will be very good if you can explain to them how to maximize the cash conversion. If we look at this example, we have profit of 700,000. So I'm comparing two situations. We have 100,000 of PIC expense. Should we convert into cash or should we not? So here, when we convert into cash, we no longer have the 400,000 deductible. So 700,000 is taxable less of partial exemption, tax at 17%, 93,075. But we have gotten 60,000 in cash. So the net is a tax payment of 33,075. But if we did not convert into cash, we would have 400,000 deduction less of partial exemption, tax of 25,075. So you have actually a differential of $8,000 between the two. And this $8,000 arises because instead of paying tax at 17%, we convert it into cash of 15. Okay, so we are actually losing out by two percentage point. Okay, so because cash conversion is at 15, we are paying tax at 17. But if we look at if we look at profits at 500,000, the situation reverses itself. We still have partial exemption. But now, with the cash conversion, instead of having tax to pay, we actually have a positive cash flow of 925. When we don't convert, we have tax of 8075. Okay? So a difference of $9,000. And this 9000 arises because first, if we have the 200000 to be taxed at 17, we actually lose out by two percentage points. But when we move into the partial exemption area, the effective rate there is 8.5%. Convert to cash 15, we are benefiting at 6.5%. So now we end up better off with a cash conversion. But everything changes because with the rebate, even at 700,000, we are better off. Because now, when we take the rebate into account, with a conversion, we have tax to pay of 5173. Without conversion, 17553. So we are actually better off doing a cash conversion. Why the turnaround? Because with a conversion, 
uh, effective rate of conversion 15%, but with the 30% tax rebate, our uh, effective tax rate of 17% becomes 11.9%. So when we convert, we are better off by 3.1%. So at this level, previously not advisable to convert, now we should convert. Hence, the figure of 740-odd thousand. Because up to that level, we should convert because at that level, our effective tax rate is 11.9%. Above that, we are losing by two percentage points. No need to convert. So this is important for SMEs to know because to me, if SMEs make a few hundred thousand, even above 300, now the effective tax rate will not be more than 11.9%. And at 500%, we are benefiting even more. Well, there's a typo there, because after retiring, my mind got rusty. I forgot how to use my calculator. So it should be minus 8422, right? So the figure should be 5653. PIC bonus. Well, previously with the PIC scheme, I was already amazed at the generosity. And now they heap on additional goodies. This PIC bonus is a gift from heaven, if you believe that. Yes, it is a gift from heaven because nowhere else would you be able to spend $5,000 and the government gives you back $5,000. As I said earlier on, when you spend $5,000, the government probably want to take some away. So at the moment, 17%, not so bad. But to give us back $5,000, that's a lot. And the requirement there is a spending on PIC of $5,000. And when you start thinking about it, this should spur SME to think about spending on PIC because really they are not spending their own money. They are spending the government's money and it is very, very generous. But when we take into account the fact that you can also claim deduction for PIC item, the benefit becomes very substantial. I've done the computation here with PIC expense of 5,000, we get back 5,000 bonus from the government. But we also can deduct 20,000 as an expense. So tax benefit from there at 17%, $3,400. The net benefit when we spend 5,000, instead of costing us, now we get a benefit of 3,004. So everyone should spend. Right, Where is that situation where you spend money and you actually get money re in return? Okay, so always, I think this is a very good start to spur SME to think about spending on PIC. Previously, the complaint was we are a small player, we don't need to think about it. Now, we are, I will tell them, think about it because it is not your money. Not only is it not your money, you get money in return. It's like Ang Pao every year. Very nice. But because the bonus is taxable, so if we want to look, look at the net cash position, we should factor in that it's taxable. So even if we were taxable at 17%, our net benefit is still 2550. So you spend 5,000 government gives you a bonus for spending money, 50%. Okay, so it's very nice. But how about conversion? Conversion is even nicer. Because when we convert, we convert at 60%, right? Because 20,000 at we get 3,000, but if we don't multiply by four, so the effective conversion is at 60. So now we get better we are better off by three thousand. 
factor tax in, we are better by 2150. Okay, so now we are still getting a benefit, substantial benefit from cash conversion. Earlier on, PIC involved the acquisition of intellectual property. So arising from feedbacks from SMEs, they said, well, we cannot afford to buy IPs. How about us paying royalties when we license know-how? Well, the government has taken that into account. Now, when you pay for your royalties, the payment of royalties will qualify for PIC. So, but this payment of royalties will become a deduction item. So when we pay royalties of 20,000, we get another 300% three, deduction. So this will be deduction as opposed to the acquisition of IP, which is a capital allowance. And also liberalizing automation equipment. So going forward, as long as the investment automates or mechanizes processes, enhances productivity, PIC will be claimable for the investment in automation category. Now, financial sector incentives, we have a whole host of financial sector incentives, and it is getting very important, increasingly so now, because there has been a lot of interest from EU thinking of moving east. Two reasons. One, EU is tightening up on the things they can do. And two, the growth region is in Asia. So they are tending to move east. So the financial sector is important and gaining importance. So the FSI incentive has been rationalized. One is the FSI HQ company. So previously, you can apply for exemption for withholding tax if you pay interests to qualifying companies. Now, this exemption will automatically be granted. 14N. Now, 14N is the amortization of premiums paid to JTC HDB for leases. So we can amortize them. So when we amortize them, the amortized amount will be qualifying deduction under 14N. So it's made specially deductible. This will expire. The way I see it, it's expiring because a lot of the times now, REITs buy up industrial properties. So JTC has already indicated going forward, if REITs were to buy up used industrial properties, they cannot pay monthly rental. They have to pay upfront lease payments. So with this closing of the loophole, there will be less returns for REITs because you have to pay your lump sum upfront and have no deductions for them. 14L is the double deduction for expenses in, incurred in the recruitment of foreign talent. Notwithstanding the fact that the government is still emphasizing on the need of foreign talent, I think, and correct, and the, the government apparently also agrees me, with me, this is rare occasion, right? That we no longer need this incentive because I think there was a survey done two months ago. Experts voted Singapore as the most